Hello, all my Scorpio friends. You know that I, I just, I feel that Scorpio is the most powerful sign in the entire Zodiac. And your um, fellow Scorpios uh, run the gamut from the lowest to the highest. And that is the gift you gave yourself. You can be, you can function on a level <clears throat> that could be inconceivable to most people. I mean, just rise up. I'm thinking of Billy Graham. He was a Scorpio. Great, great guy. Okay, before I go into your fabulous forecast for this month, um, well, actually, in a few days, it'll be April. So it's not March, it's April. Um, I want to invite you to watch my brand new YouTube show. It's called Choose Happy. And I've got one uh, video up. This, this show is going to be comprised of um, non-astrological, spiritual, and common sense. It's, it won't cost you a dime. This is my gift to you. Um, what I've done is I've gone beyond astrology and I'm sharing vignettes of truth. In other words, how to deal with everyday life situations because our programming owns us until we let it go. <clears throat> and as many of you know, because I've already done your, your chart, either your birth chart, or your forecast, um, my passion is pointing out all the details of your programming as list as shown in the birth chart and then carrying you a step forward. So that with, with my three-step technique, which is on my website, MaxineTaylor.com, um, so that you can be free from it. So... Anyhow, that's what I'm putting out there. I think you'll find it fascinating. Okay, because you're always interested in the mysteries of life. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this glorious forecast that I've got. Excuse me. All righty. Well, you can see that all the action is really right around here. Fifth, sixth, and seventh houses. Let's start with a fifth. Mars, the red planet, is what comes first to you. It's what you'll fight with and fight for. Oh, this is so much better with glasses. Um, it's in the fifth house of fun and games, children, um, just anything that is enjoyable, movies, art, uh, football, basketball, any of anything that is entertaining and anything pertaining to children. And by the way, our pets are our children too. They're part of the family. So normally pets are sixth house, but if your little puppy, puppy baby or a uh, cat is part of the family, sleeps in the same bed as you, uh, just follows you around, loves you to pieces, then this is, I, I would read the fifth house. Um, and just know that you are not alone, okay? So with Mars in the fifth house, you want to play. You will, you will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody who thwarts that. It's important that you have fun. Now, do you like wild uh, and woolly sports? Do you like um, active sports like football, hockey, uh, etc.? Because Mars there wants a fight. Um, and so outlets for fighting are all over the place. I found that um, a football field is um, 
a surrogate to um, a war field. That's where, foot, I mean, football is a pretty violent sport, but it's a, the football stadium is the opportunity, the substitute for war. And Mars is war. So you may find that you are involved in physical uh, warfare without leaving the house, just watching it on TV. On the 30th of the month, Mars leaves your fifth house of fun and games and children. I mean, you're going to put your children first. And your children can be your creation. Are you an artist? Venus and Mars can absolutely be a creation and it's your baby. On the 30th, Mars moves into the sixth house of work, health and service and you are busy at work. This is a terrific time to take care of your health, excuse me, and to focus on the daily activities. You put your job first, you put your health first. Super. Venus, the planet of love and money and art and beauty. It's the lesser benefic. And so all things beautiful are activated and it's in your fifth house of children. So we've already talked about kids. And on the fifth of the month, Venus moves into your sixth house of work, health, and service, and you're enjoying your job. Uh, it can involve beauty or art. Um, your health uh, will or can improve. And it may very well be that you're really enjoying a new position in which you um, are loving people, situations, and things. It's, it's quite beautiful. Then on the 29th, Venus moves into your seventh house of partnership. And this means that if there's nobody in your life, I'm going to suggest that you get out there and find somebody because they're sitting there waiting on you. If you are already involved in a partnership, um, what was that wonderful song? Shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. Things are going to be all right if you only will. Okay? Now, Mercury, the blue planet, it just sitting there all month. Why? Because on the first of the month, it goes retrograde, and it doesn't come out of retrograde till the 25th. And it's in your sixth house of job. So I'm going to you I'm going to suggest to you that you not start a new job under a retrograde Mercury because it will either fizzle out completely or have to be redone within the year. So your job may be, even though it's blessed by Venus and you're passionate about it with Mars there, um, th there's something about the job itself that is confusing. And it can be your own indecision should about, should I stay or should I go? Wait until after the 25th to decide, okay? Just keep your options in mind. Now, the sun, the yellow planet, the giver of life, the center of your life has been and will be in your sixth house of health and work and uh, just uh, the desire to contribute to the whole. Um, the center of your life is your job and it's lit up beautifully. And you need to be the leader at work. However, if you're not, this is your opportunity to do so. Double, however, Mercury is retro, and you don't want to start a new job on a retrograde Mercury. But we do want to tie up the loose ends of unfinished business 
at work. And health. The sixth house deals with your health. Venus, the lesser benefic, helps your health. The sun, the giver of life, absolutely. Mars, let's get going. Mm -mm, don't do it. Mercury, where are we going? What are we doing? You get the picture. Okay, on the 19th, um, the sun moves into your seventh house of partnership. The public, the one-on-one -on -one relationship that you have with everybody now. It is really beautiful. If there's no one in your life, you could meet someone. If you are a currently uh, married on whatever level you consider yourself to be married, uh, make your mate the center of your life, which would be a wise decision since your mate is putting themselves first. You might as well get on the same boat. So you've got Venus there loving everybody it moves into your seventh house on the 29th and then jupiter the greater benefic abundance joy happiness is in your seventh house and it doesn't move this month so you've got the sun jupiter and venus the two benefics your relationships look beautiful. Now, we have a new moon on the 8th, but it's not just any new moon. It is a solar eclipse. With an eclipse, we'll start feeling it about two weeks before it occurs, okay? So you've been feeling it. You might not have known it, but you've been feeling it. This new moon solar eclipse normally um a new moon lasts two months the uh, two weeks excuse me an eclipse can last up to a year and even beyond that mm -hmm. this is a major uh piece of information and this solar eclipse can help you make st wonderful strides forward at work, except wait till Mercury goes direct. So this eclipse on the 8th is in 19 degrees of Aries. Find 19 Aries in your birth chart and you'll have the whole picture. Okay? So the new moon, the energy starts moving forward. Two weeks later, We've got a full moon. And what this full moon on the 23rd does for you, it's in four Scorpio, by the way. It sits in your first house. And because the right-hand side of the chart is the other people in your life. It's for others, others, others. This full moon, that's when everything comes to a head in a good way, says, hey, I need some attention here. And the interesting part is you can give yourself the attention. You can take your attention off of your job, off of other people. And with this full moon, put it on yourself. Do what you want, when you want, how you want, because you want. So, it's, it's kind of looking at, at the, the whole chart there. It, it reminds me of lead, follow, or get but get out of the way. And I'm very happy to tell you that you've got that beautiful full moon in the first house. You deserve it. You will have earned it. So have a wonderful April and come back in May when once again, I give you your uh, current forecast. Till we meet again, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.